Hey guys, welcome to the video series of data engineering on Microsoft DP203. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. So this morning, which is September 5th, 2021, I took the DP203 exam and I passed it. I decided to take the exam after the full sunset or the retirement of DP201 and DP200 to avoid any confusion about the exam patterns and all other things. So in this video, I will talk about my experience, exam pattern overview, and the rough breakdowns of the questions. Uh, so, and finally, some tips to perform better uh, in your exam or how to prepare better for your Azure Data Engineering exam. So without further ado, let's start. So let's first take a look into the exam pattern. It was an online exam, but you can do it in in-person too. So um, if it's open in your country, it depends like where, where you are. If uh, things are open in your country, you can take it uh, in person too. Uh, I took the online one uh, because I'm in Canada and things are not open here. And uh, the duration, so the exam duration was 100 minutes with the total 65 questions. Out of these 65 questions, four questions were related to case studies and remaining 61 questions were like a general questions like or scenario based questions. But last four questions were case studies. And uh, these four case studies questions uh, are part of this 100 minute duration only. You don't get a different time for that. And case study questions will come at the end of the exam. And uh, in the exam, like you can't go back once you submit, like once you answer a question, you can, uh, you can't go back to it. But if you are not 100% sure, like you can mark it for review, then you can go it back, you can go back. And the passing percentage is the 70 or you can say you have to get 700 out of the 1000 marks. Let's look at the high level breakdown of the questions. Uh, so I got six to eight questions on Azure Data Lake Gen 2. And the questions were mainly focused on the folder structure, file type, and the applications or the high availability of the Data Lake Gen 2. And the interesting part was that in case of folder questions, uh, there were like fill in the blanks. So I need to fill the folder names and the if you remember, like folders could be raw, curated and cleaned, and then it followed by the partition, like year, month, date, and finally the file name. So it was like that. There were a couple of questions like that. So it's a really important topic. Uh, file type questions were there too. And it's a bit tricky because uh, like different transformations folder have uh, different file types and it depends on the use cases too. So uh, read about like, Parquet, Avro, or text files, and in which use case they can be suitable. And the last one, uh, the scenario based like replication, redundancy questions, or DR kind of questions. Next is the Azure Synapse Analytics. It have the highest number of questions in my exam. And I believe like a, it is like going forward, like in DP203, Azure, there will be a more emphasis on Azure Synapse Analytics. And honestly, I felt like exam were more uh, in detail for Azure Synapse Analytics and Data Lake and some other services, not everything which is mentioned in the um, outline in the uh, like in the document outlined for the DP203 on the Microsoft site. So let's uh, let's take a look at the few questions which I remembered. So there were question. There was one question related to open row set, and that was a query. So like um, there was a question, and then the four queries you need to pick like which. And uh, I remember like it was related to open row set. And there were like a couple of questions related to Spark. And if you have good understanding of Spark, you can crack them easily. And these questions could be found in Databricks too. They are not specifically related to Azure Synapse Analytics, but like in Azure, Azure Spark Pool, um, like in Azure, like Azure Spark Pool is the part of Azure Synapse Analytics. So they kind of, not kind of, they fall under Azure Synapse Analytics, but if you understand Spark, like you can answer them. And there was like uh, completing the missing piece of the code for both T-SQL and Spark that is, uh, uh, 
that is important like but the good thing is like these are they they give you the code it's not like you have to write the code it's either a drop down drag and drop or uh, fill in the blanks with options are given and the next is the dmvs which is basically monitoring the jobs y query so there is a dedicated document on microsoft uh, official site for it but i'm going to, i'm also going to make a video on like um, on it in the monitoring section of this series uh, by the way, the series is still not finished. So I'm going to make these. And there were some questions related to the external tables. Uh, Databricks and Stream Analytics have a similar number of questions, like four to five. So altogether, like close to 10 or 11 questions were on Databricks and Azure Stream Analytics. In Databricks, uh, there was one question, and this was like my first question of the exam, where like they give you they gave me a like config or JSON file, and then uh, there were like two or three answers. There were like two or three uh, options I need to fill. So there was like I need to tell what kind of cluster is it like? Uh, is like it does it have like delta delta lag and all those kind of things? So based on the information in there, like it was, I won't say straightforward, but if you work with these things, like it's uh, it was not that complicated. And there was a question on uh, how Azure Databricks and Key Vault work together, uh, and questions about various cluster mode in Databricks, like interactive, concurrency. There were like scenarios where they give you, okay, you have a team where uh, a cluster is needed for, and I'm talking about Databricks, a, a Databricks cluster needed for uh, data engineers, for data scientists, and to do day-to-day uh, -day, like a query, kind of thing so one cluster is named for that so based on that like they will ask okay uh, they will give you the like scenario and they will say okay what cluster works where uh, and um, and one more thing like in my case there was no specific question on the delta lake so it was just part of that json file but no nothing specifically for delta lake as our stream analytics, uh, there were like a scenario based questions where um, where like we need to find which service suited for suited best for like input, output and for the query and Windows functions. Yeah, they are very important. Like uh, why I say important for stream analytics, like in every other questions, you will see that um, that stream analytic questions are more on Windows queries. So there will be cup one or I guess one or two questions which are very straightforward. Like they will ask what is, like they give you a definition and say which window is it or like what kind of uh, window function should be used. But there were queries too, which kind of tricky. Like if you don't work with stream analytics, you won't be, you, you can get confused very easily. And uh, there was also one question related to the Spark structured streaming. So it's not uh, aligned to Azure Stream Analytics. Um, like it, it's more of Azure Snaps Analytics, but they asked a question of uh, Spark structured uh, streaming too, like whether you want to append, update, or uh, there was like three modes that we have in structured streaming, uh, append, update. Uh, what's the one? There is one more. That's for overwrite. Okay, uh, for data masking, there was one question. Uh, it was very straightforward. They ask, um, they give you a credit card number and they say, okay, first four digits need to be uh, visible. Rest of them are not visible. What need to be done? So that's like dynamic data masking. It's part of the security. Don't worry about like uh, that. There is no video for that in my series, but I'm going to create that video. And on, there was one simple question on data archiving on lifecycle management too. There they simply ask, okay, if you have to create an ar archive, how you do that? So lifecycle management. Distribution strategy of Azure Synapse Analytics or dedicated SQL pool is important. I kept it separate because they have, uh, they were like a specific questions there. So they were like, uh, I remember correctly, there was like roughly three questions just related to the distribution strategy. And this is not like partition I'm talking about, distribution strategy I'm talking about. So one question was like, uh, um, what type of distribution is need to be like hash? And it, it have like multiple um, 
like it was like you need there were like a two questions associated to it uh, so you need to tell okay which uh, it was about two table two fact tables and then we need to tell okay for both of them which distribution strategy applies and what key we need to use for it that was one one very scenario or like a straight question like they gave you a, a certain file size and they want to do some very basic calculation based on then you have to tell okay which distribution strategy and one was like a, a small lookup table and like repli and replicated distribution is perfect for that there was one question just uh, purely for key wall which falls under security uh, Azure Databricks have a um, good number of questions. I will, I'll say four to five questions were related to Azure Data Factory. And in Azure Data Factory, um, three thing, three topics I remember. There was like a one literal pipeline and they asked, okay, uh, when this pipeline will run, like what, what, uh, what are the possible outcomes or like how it work or something like that. And there were options. And uh, there was a question about triggers too, like, um like they give you a scenario and then ask okay what kind of trigger you want to use like tumbling schedule uh manual or uh, event based those kind of uh, integration runtime have a one question or two question too so as our data factory is pretty much um, have similar number of questions as databricks and stream analytics there was a straight question on star schema and uh, monitoring have two to four questions where like um they they ask about like a, um, they give you a situation and they ask okay what kind of alert you have to uh, pick for this and where you store your log analytics so there were like two to four questions there um, there was like a couple of questions about uh, surrogate and business key so to please um, please don't forget about like it's an easy win like you can read about what is surrogate key what is business key and you can get the answer straight surrogate key is basically like a system generated key and business key is not system generated is like a user defined key uh there were like uh two three questions on role ba role based access management and uh and these are not like purely like you won't feel like okay role based uh, they were like aligned with somebody so when i say aligned like uh, you will get role based um like these questions either with like data like gen 2 as or snaps analytics those kind like with some storage or some workspace kind of thing so uh, like don't confuse like if uh, as our data lake is there like it's just as our data lake it could be other pieces too and uh, there was like a good five or five to six questions to improving the performance of query where they give you the query give you the options how can you improve the performance and uh, uh, these are like use case specific like you can't go uh, like query uh, optimizing the query is not like a, um i won't say it's like a, it's not like a straight rule like okay you follow one two three steps and you're done no it depends on the use case to use case like how what are you dealing with how how amount like what's the amount of data it's like there are like a lot of factors uh which decide like how we should optimize our query okay so this is like a breakdown of the questions which you and uh, i read about like or i talked about like a couple of my friends they gave the uh, exam in september only like maybe two days ago or um, like yesterday or something they have the similar kind of questions too so i'm hoping like uh, for dp203 you will if you are preparing sooner this will be the high level breakdown of structure so the main focus will be on azure snaps analytics and data lake and databricks and stream analytics and azure data factory uh, in the microsoft document i know they they have like a lot of uh, um, lot of um, subjects or topics mentioned but um, i didn't see any questions of them so just be like if you fo i believe like if you focus only on these main things you should be good and uh yeah i, I forgot to mention this is like i didn't mention that there was like one question on uh, um 
slowly changing dimensions too and it was uh, not it was uh, kind of straightforward question too it was like they uh they asked okay um if we want to the like dimensions are changing this way and we want to keep the historical data what type of uh, dimension it will be type 2 so there were like two questions one was that and the and other one was like they gave you the schema of the table and in that um, they asked okay based on the schema of the table what kind of uh, slow changing dimension it is and like type 0 type 1 type 2 type 3 okay and the tips to perform better in the exam. So the first thing I'll say, be confident, relax uh, during the exam because the answer is in front of you. And when we have an answer in front of us, like if we have understanding about the topic and follow some strategies, it's easy to find the answer. So the best strategy in such scenarios is the elimination strategy. Uh, I used it, uh, I won't say like, I knew answer of all the questions. In some cases it was, I didn't know the answer. I was like, I was more confused. And uh, in some cases, even like it was a pure guess. So there also I use the first, like my first step is to use the elimination strategy. So what things doesn't make sense, just eliminate those answers. So you have like less options to pick. And the next thing is like, sometimes what happens like, we don't even understand the question properly elimination strategy doesn't work like uh, let's say it's it's a, some topic which we don't read or like it's something which is not striking our mind so in that case like get the hints from the keywords like uh, read the questions and you're not getting but check the keywords and based on that uh, like answer your question and uh, the fourth and very important thing is learn or practice at your pace. So why I say that, like um, a lot of people ask me like um, uh, how much time we need to prepare for DP203 or what you recommend. So everybody is individual, like uh, it, it depends on person to person. It's like, it's a, it's a totally independent thing. See, in my case, um, if I say I, uh, I didn't, like I studied for a week or I studied for two days, three days, it, it doesn't help because like I work with Azard in my day-to-day -day life and I, I understand all these things. So it's it's a bit different for me. So um, I'm trying to say here is like everybody's situation is different. So don't, um, don't fall for this. Okay, get your diploma or like, sorry, get your certification in two weeks or, or one month or two months. Uh, I want to say like go with your pace. So if you can study things and are you already working on Azure, you can do it in like a day. Like um, if you already like playing with all these technologies and all those services in day to day life. And so you can do it in a day and you can work hard, do it in two weeks, depending on you. Like it's totally depending on your caliber, your, how you're approaching for this exam. So don't compare yourself with anybody and just focus, uh, the way you like learn it if you need like more time give more time so learn and practice and i didn't give the mock test but like this pdf prep.com like uh, they have a like a really good uh mock test which like when i gave the exam and after that uh, uh when i was preparing for this video i was like okay just telling people okay there was like this type of question this type of questions won't help much. So I was trying to find like where I can find the similar questions which I got. So this link, I'm going to put it in my description too, is the best place where like, uh, um, I won't say exactly same questions or something, but they were like pretty much in the same direction. So that's definitely going to help. I didn't give the mock, mock test. As I said, my situation is a bit different. I work with Azure every day. And uh, even for this exam, it's not like I studied a lot. But uh, it's like, I have like a lot of hands-on practice and I come from data engineering background. So uh, it's, it's different. So, but in general, if, if I have to learn something, let's say if I'm doing a data science course, I'll do mock tests. So it helps you to understand like what kind of questions are coming, how to deal with them. And like, it's just uh, like a, 
a better approach. And uh, another thing is like the case studies, like um, I kind of like um, didn't mention in any slides, but in case studies, like um, they give you like case studies on the left side of the window, like, uh, and they say, okay, you need to do this for this case study. So then you have to expand it and read about the case study. Don't like uh, if they give you six case studies, don't jump to the case studies directly. First read the question. Okay, if for that question, they point out to specific case study, go and read about it. Because I saw like there was like four questions and on the left side, there was like five case studies. So don't like directly jump to the case studies. This is just like, a, I know like you guys are smart, you won't do that, but um, just a, like a precaution. And I'm going to give you the best, uh, um, I'll say the game changer for exam is hands-on practice. So why it's a game changer? If you have hands-on practice, so there were like a lot of questions which are related to query optimization, filling the blanks with the code or like um, fill the missing pieces of the code. So if you like just learn all these things like by theory, it, you might understand things well, but generally in my experience and in my journey uh, or my throughout my career uh, i have learned things better when i do hands-on practice with them and as i mentioned like for this exam uh, i'll be honest like i didn't study that much but i have a hands-on practice i work with these things that helps me a lot and and same like if you see a code like it can be a mess and hit but you have if you have hands-on practice you understand like what exactly uh, is required and hands-on practice like make these services uh, easy to understand so i'll give you one example like batch processing in theory yeah it's yeah, like it's easy to observe yeah, even imagine but when you create a batch solution or like a batch pipeline it's it's a totally different game you learn a lot when you create a batch pipeline so that's like one example i'm giving you like uh, i have one video where like i'm like it is a, an hour long video where i'm creating a, a batch pipeline if you practice the same you will going to learn like four or five services how they work together how we need to like uh, create these services and how uh, uh, like uh, things work in a real world so by last suggestion for anybody like don't feel like it's a like okay if i just read about these things watch videos and do mock test uh that's enough it could be enough you can pass the exam but here the motive is not just to pass the exam is to understand things and is to implement in the real world too because um i, I guess like you guys are reading for this as to get a better opportunity or like to do well in your um, like in your current position so hands-on is the is the main game changer uh, so that's all um, for this video I'll, I'll keep you uh, I'll, I'll keep making the other videos for DP 203 I'll try to complete all the topics but I found like there will be some topics which won't come in the exam so I might skip them but otherwise um, thank thanks again have a great um, great day or great night depending on where you are in the world thank you